Hey guys, you've Raj here from the Brainstorm Force team and in today's exciting video, we're gonna learn how to use two-factor authentication on WordPress websites to prevent hacking and malicious login attempts. So let's start with some of the basics. As you know, WordPress is the most popular CMS out there and according to independent resources or sources actually, 35% uh, of the internet is powered by WordPress. That is amazing. And WordPress as a CMS has over 61% market share. That's more than all the other CMS combined. So it's a dominant CMS used by over 450 million websites across the globe. That's a huge and scary number. Now WordPress's popularity is not without its downsides. Let me show you what I mean. So this is a report by Sukari, a popular internet security firm. And according to their report in 2018, 90% of all infected websites that they saw uh, as their customers were based on WordPress. Now this is not saying that WordPress is not uh, secure or it's, it's a little bit less secure than other CMSs. It's just the popularity of the WordPress platform that attracts a lot of hackers and malicious intern uh, users to the platform. Also, if you look at another report, which I'll show you in a second from WordFence, which is another popular security firm that specializes in WordPress, the number comes even scarier. So this is the number I was talking about. This is just the daily attempts of malicious login attempts uh, in WordPress that they block through their service. Now this is just daily attempts of malicious uh, attempts of login inside WordPress and this is just WordFence numbers. Uh, so the entire number or the total numbers will be much higher and you can see the number of attempts is not a joke. It's a huge amount of numbers and huge amount of people are trying to get into all WordPress websites with obviously not the best intents and heart. Now looking at these numbers, you should be a little bit worried because if your website unfortunately gets hacked, it's not a pretty or a rosy picture. It's You have to spend thousands of dollars sometimes to get uh, your content back or even uh, the uh, website up and running. And in the meantime, uh, malicious users who or hackers that gain access to your website may insert malicious content, pornographic con content and links to shady websites like casinos and other websites. And then you will also lose your search engine rankings, which is very difficult to come back or gain back to their original levels if websites get hacked. This is a known fact and you can read about it in the forums. So overall, if your website gets hacked uh, with all these uh, malicious attempts going around, it's going to cost you a lot of money, time and a lot of stress as well. Now, as you probably heard, prevention is better than cure. So let's implement that philosophy on our websites and prevent hacking attempts using two-factor authentication. And I'm going to show you the entire process in this video. First, let's talk about what is a two-factor authentication. Now, generally, if you have a website or even on a lot of online transactions and login accounts that you have on various websites, the most common way to log into websites and portals is through a username and a password. Now, the password is the thing that keeps your account safe. So that is the first factor of authentication that you use on a website. So if you use more than one factor of authentication, that is a multi-factor or two-factor authentication. And what we're going to do is set up a service on a WordPress website that allows us to integrate two-factor authentication on our WordPress websites. And the service that we're going to integrate is from Google called Google Authenticator. So Google Authenticator is a free service by Google, which is offered as a mobile app for Android and iOS devices. I'm on the Google Play Store because I have an Android phone and it's available for iOS as well. I will leave links down in the description for both the iOS and the Google App Play Store so you can download them on your devices. And many other companies also make similar software. As you can see, the Microsoft Authenticator is also a popular choice, but we're going to use Google Authenticator because it's a very popular service and it's been around for longer but you are free to use other authentication applications just make sure to use a trusted one i leave names for some other popular applications down in the description so you can check it out but for now uh, we'll use the google authenticator app so how does google authenticator work or how would you make it work with your website now the concept is pretty simple whatever app or software services that you want to use with google authenticator you have to link both the services once and then once they are linked Next time you want to log into a service or account, or in this case, your WordPress website, you will have to enter a security code that is generated by Google Authenticator inside your phone or on your phone. And we'll also look at the process in detail. This is just the concept of how it works. Now, one common question that can come to your mind is that WordPress isn't compatible or natively integrates with Google Authenticator. Then how are we going to connect both of these services? Well, the answer with WordPress is usually there's a plugin for that. 
and the plugin that we recommend for Google Authenticator or to integrate your WordPress website with Google Authenticator is the Google Authenticator plugin by Mini Orange. It's a fantastic plugin. It's a freemium service that this company provides and the plugin is completely free to install and anything and everything that we cover in this video is covered in the free version of the plugin as well. So you don't have to pay a subscription service. And it's a fantastic little plugin. It supports Authy, Google Authenticator, Mini Orange's own Authenticator service, uh, even Microsoft's Authenticator and a bunch of other authentication methods. And it tightly integrates with a lot of WooCommerce add-ons like WooCommerce, LearnPress, Lifter LMS, BuddyPress. So uh, no matter what kind of website you're creating, it supports or it, this plugin will definitely support it. And obviously you can check out all the details on the plugins page itself. I'll leave a link down in the description. Now with plugins, it's usually good to have a choice and a lot of people don't want to have all these fancy integrations. They just want a simple authentication plugin. And if you're one of those people, then the plugin that I would recommend you use is the 2FAs Lite uh, Google Authenticator plugin by Two Factor Authentication Service Inc. It's a company that provides this service. Again, it's a freemium service that they provide, and this plugin is free to use as it's, as it's on the WordPress repository. And the service that we are going to use, or anything that you need to use for two factor authentication, uh, is free to use with this service as well. So if you're looking for a simple plugin that just does a two factor authentication and for a simple website, then this is the plugin you should be using. And coming to one more plugin, uh, if you remember, I did mention WordFence and I showed some statistics that WordFence reports inside uh, the WordPress admin area. So WordFence, the security plugin also has two-factor authentication as a feature, even in the free version. But I would not recommend you use it. Now, I have nothing against WordFence. It's a fantastic little plugin. But my point is it's better to separate your security plugin from your authentication plugin and the reason I'm recommending this uh, will become clear as we proceed to the video and I have discussed this in a little more detail in the video uh, and specifically with a practical example so I would suggest that you watch that part of the video and then make a call if WordPress is the right choice for you and I have nothing against them it's a fantastic plugin if you want to use it now let's head to the website and we'll install the plugin and start using it all right we're back in the website and this is the plugin that i was talking about all you have to do is go to the plugins and add new menu just search for google authenticator and most of the time uh, you'll see the mini orange plugin that i was talking about as the first result so let's install the plugin activate it and then we'll head to the settings all right uh, the plugin is now installed and this is where you'll automatically reach once the plugin is installed and we won't be using any of these options i'll just drop this or close this menu out and show you how to start configuring the Google Authenticator within this application or this plugin. After you close the first notification, this is the second notification that you'll get that you can actually start a tour with the plugin. It will show you some essential features. I already know what to do. So when you install the plugin for yourself on your website, you can take the tour. But for right now, I'm going to close it. All right, so this is how the plugins uh, interface will look like. It's a little complicated, uh, to be honest, but there are plenty of options. And uh, the most important part, the plugin is pretty powerful. Just to tell you uh, how it works or what the features are, these are all the things or these are all the configurations for two-factor authentication you can use on the free plan of this plugin. So you can have Google Authenticator, you can have security questions that you can configure for your website, OTP over SMS, OTP over email, mini orange QR code, and, and a lot of other options, even Telegram and WhatsApp are supported, but with some uh, specifics. For example, WhatsApp only works when you are connected with Twilio, which might be a paid subscription. Also, you have some paid methods that you can use. And uh, so what we'll configure is the Google Authenticator, and we'll also configure security questions and OTP over email. Now, why will I do that or why are they important? I'll tell you uh, by once the Google Authenticator part is done. And it's very important that you do the same when you're installing this plugin. Uh, always have more than one uh, method to log into your website because you know uh, all methods are not perfect. You might have issues with one. And that, that is when the other options or the plan B kind of log into your website comes into play. So let's start with first with the Google Authenticator. All you have to do is click the configure button to start the configuration process. So this is the configuration screen that you will see for Google Authenticator. Make sure the app is installed. If you haven't installed it yet at this point, then you will have links to the, both the Android App Store, Android Play Store, sorry, and the uh, iOS App Store as well. So make sure the plugin or the application is actually installed. Before that, what I'll recommend is you change the app name because this is what you will see inside Google Authenticator. So make sure that you make it the name of the website or something that you instantly recognize. All right, uh, I've changed the name, I've saved the app name and my settings are now saved. And what I'll do now is open up Google Authenticator on my mobile phone and I'll connect the app by scanning this barcode. I'll show it or I'll show how it works on my mobile phone right now. 
All right, so this is my mobile phone display. And as you can see, I have Google Authenticator, which is the uh, icon on the left and also an alternative installed, but I'll use Google Authenticator. So I'll open it up and you'll see a bunch of uh, options or a bunch of websites already configured. This is how it will look like when you start using Google Authenticator. So what I'm gonna do is uh, touch the plus icon on the bottom right. And once I plus, uh, touch the plus icon, once again, I got the option to scan a QR code. So I'm gonna touch that icon or the option right now. And this is what you'll see, a camera scanner or a QR score, uh, scanner will open up. And all you have to do is point it to the QR code on the screen, which I'm gonna do right now. And instantly you can see uh, the Brainstorm Force app, which I saved right here is now visible on the screen. And it's also showing up an OTP, which is freshly generated right now. So all I have to do is take that OTP and enter it right here and verify and save. And 2FA has been successful. That's all you need to do to set up two-factor authentication on your website. And now we're gonna set up some other options. And I'm gonna also tell you some of uh, fallback plans that you need to configure so that in any extreme cases, so that you maybe you, you lose your mobile phone, maybe you want to transfer accounts to a different uh, cell phone device and all those scenarios, what you need to do. So once you see uh, this screen, you can close this successfully because 2FA has been set up for your website. Uh, now we'll set up some security questions, which I'm gonna do right now. All right, so this is the uh, menu or the form where you set up some backup questions or uh, security questions. You have two options or in two questions, you can select the uh, questions from uh, the drop down menu and enter the answer. And the third question, you can enter a question answer yourself. So I'm not gonna show you the process because I'm very sure that you are already familiar with the process of how to set up some basic security questions, but uh, I wanted to show you how it works or how the menu looks so that uh, you are familiar with the process. Let's go back uh, to the configuration menu and set up the last important option. All right, with security questions out of the way, the next thing you should configure is OTP or email. It's also very important to set up. So all you have to do is click the configure button right here and enter your email address. Mine is already inserted. It's probably taken from the user ID from my website. And I'm gonna click the save button. And once you enter your email address and you click the next button, you will again uh, get an email with a single one-time password or OTP, which you have to enter here and submit it so that your email ID can be verified. And the next time you need to use this feature, your email is verified. Again, I'm not gonna do the process because I don't wanna make this video a little longer as it already is a little bit long. So I'm gonna go back right now, but you should do and configure this process. Absolutely, yes, you should do it. All right, so once you've configured the authenticator and security questions and your email, you should see that they are appearing in green. Mine is not there because I, as I told you, I haven't configured it, which I just wanted to show you the process on how to do so. But one critical thing that you should definitely do after this is get backup codes. Now, what are backup codes? Think of them as uh, secret one-time passwords that will override uh, your OTPs. And these are important uh, in case you lose your device or you don't have access to your phone and it's an emergency, you do want to enter your website. So to get the backup codes, all you have to do is click the get backup codes button right here. And once you do so, a notepad or a text file will be downloaded to your website like this. And once you open it, it will have some codes. Let me show you how they look. So this is how your backup codes will look like. This is just an application that I'm using to open text files. On your computer, you might be using Notepad. So uh, don't worry about the interface, only worry about these. So you have five different codes that you will get. And what these are, these are one-time use passwords in case you lose your device. And it's very important that you download them and save them in a location that you always have access to because think of them as fail safes to getting into your website. Maybe if you lose your device and you also cannot get into your email to get an OTP. Uh, these are the things that will save your life. So make sure that they are saved in a secure location. I'm showing you the codes because obviously you don't know the URL of the website I'm working on. So it's completely fine. Now do remember that each of these can be used only once. So once you use one of these passwords once, it is not going to be useful once more and you should delete it or maybe just archive it somewhere. And if you do face a scenario where you have to use one or more of these codes, then make sure to download a fresh copy of these codes. So you always have some backup plan and a fail safe option that you can use to get into your website. All right, so we've set up the plugin completely. We've set up Google Authenticator. We've set up some security questions. We also have our OTP set up over email and we also have backup codes. So you always have a plan B, even plan C and plan D in case something goes wrong. So now let's test uh, the Google Authenticator uh, by logging out of the website and also seeing how the interface looks like. And I also show you a screen recording of my phone on how the code looks like and how you'll use it to log in to your website. So let's log out of this website right now. All right, I'm logged out of my website and this is what you expect to see on WordPress when you log into your websites. So I'll log in uh, using my saved username and password. 
So once you attempt to log in, uh, this is the screen you will see. Obviously, it's generated by the plugin that we just configured and it requires or it needs a code from Google Authenticator to log in. But before I do that, I want to talk about some of the backup options that we just configured, uh, but especially the backup codes and other options. So now in case uh, you break your device or it's stolen, you lose it accidentally or you dive into a swimming pool with it, you won't have access to your device and obviously you can't access the Google Authenticator app as well because there's no desktop version, it is a mobile only app. So in that case, what do you do? Well, that's why we configured some backup options. So what you can do is use the backup codes option or you will also see the options to use or get an OTP via email or answer some security questions right here. As I mentioned, I did show you the process of configuring the OTP via email and also the security questions, but I did not configure them. That is why you don't see them here. But once you do, you will see all three options here. So now in case you don't have access to Google Authenticator or your device, for some reason, you have three different ways to get into your website, which is very powerful and very useful at times. Now, this is also one of the reasons I mentioned that you should not be using a security plugin that also has two-factor authentication. Talking specifically about WordFence, as you remember, if you if you remember the image, I'll just put it up on the screen once again. It had only one fallback option, and in case you lose the scores, it will be difficult to get into your website. Also, if all, all fails, if you lose access to your device, you don't have the backup codes, you lose access to your email, and you can't answer your security questions, but you want to get into your website, the only backup option is to go into your website's uh, uh, the public HTML directory using FTP or contacting your host and disabling the two-factor authentication plugin. And once you do that, uh, the plugin will be disabled and you'll get access to your website. Now let's compare two scenarios. If you attempt or if you disable this plugin, uh, then all you will lose is a two-factor authentication. But if you have to disable a security plugin like WordFence, then all your security features will be disabled by the time you go uh, into your website and reconfigure or enable the plugin. So it's a big of a security risk. That is why I recommend that you should keep your security plugin and your two-factor authentication plugin separate. Now it's a bit of an extreme scenario that I was talking about, but that is why you configure or take all the options think of it as insurance uh, you you take it you spend a lot of money on it but you hope to never use it just think of it like that uh, you have all backup options and you hope to never use them so think of it like this and now let me show you how to log into your website using authenticator so i'll put up a screen recording once again on the screen and you'll see what i'm doing all right uh, so google authenticator is running on my uh, phone again i have a new password now or new login id and i'll just enter it right here and let's click validate. And now you're in. As you saw, it's pretty easy to use. You just need your phone and the password generated, but it's also very secure. And before I go or before we end this video, there's one important thing that I like to point out that if you want to change devices or switch to a new device, you also have to transfer all the Google authentication information to a new device. There's a feature built inside the app that lets you do so. So let me put up a screen recording of my phone once again so you can check it out. All right, I'm, in, I'm inside Authenticator once again and passwords are generating as you saw. All you have to do is click the three dotted menu right here and go to transfer accounts. And then if you want to export your account or export all the authentication information to a new device, you have to use the export account option. This is the first one. If you want to import uh, the account from other devices, you have to use the import accounts thing. And that is all. It's pretty easy to do and you can configure your device or new device in a couple of minutes. And that's all for this video, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. And if you like this kind of content, hit that thumbs up icon. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. Also hit the bell to receive notifications about future videos. My name is Yuvraj. You're watching Brainstorm Forces YouTube channel. And I hope to see you in the next video. Take care. Stay safe.